The Port of Port Peninsula is nearly an island. It's barely hooked on to the west coast. Port of Port Bay gapes northward, flanked on one side by Louis Hills, and on the other by this remarkable site. Long Point, it's called, a spear-like finger of land stretching forever into the ocean. At its tip, a summer fishing station they call Blue Beach. Across the bay, a river swoops down from the mountains to spill into the bay. This is Fox Island River, the main port, the only port on this side of the bay. Shifting sands, a harborless shore, the peculiar geography of Port of Port Bay has kept the fishery from developing, according to fisherman Alan Alexander. Well, that's the, the biggest problem, really. That's why you see so many of these small 18-foot flat bottom dories. The fishermen have to haul up every night, and obviously, the keel bottom or that type of a boat, you just can't handle it on the beach. So there's, this is why we're, we're still with the small dory. On the Port of Peninsula alone, I think there's between six and 700 fishermen. Now that, I don't know what percentage would be full-time or versus part-time, but that's the figure we've been given by DFO. And uh, it's mostly your 18-foot flat-bottom dories. But now there aren't many harbors here. I believe that's one of your main problems. No, well, there, there's one in Port of Bay, a lovely one uh, across the water here, uh, Blue Beach, but uh, that's all it has is a harbor. It's uh, no electrical facilities or Really, the road is not much more than a path to get down to it, so it's really, it's really uh, inaccessible to the fishermen, really. You know, there's a lot of fishermen over there, but uh, they're sort of shacking themselves, and we're back to the kerosene lantern type thing. What about on this side of the bay now? This side, well, we have uh, Fox Island River down there, and I, I think we finally got the uh, small craft people, small craft harbors people uh, committed to do something down there. They've got a uh, part of a retaining wall, steel sheet piling, and I understand uh, there'll be more work done on that, but uh, right at the moment, it's almost impossible to get in and out. It is impossible, in fact, at low tide to get in and out of the river, so we're fishing with the tides now. An hour or so earlier, or later, and this boat wouldn't get out. She'd ground on a sandbar. The tide information in this part of Newfoundland is as important as the forecast. A lot of people on this shore are of French descent, yet you'll find a lot of people with South Coast names. Lords, for instance, was settled largely by people from Sagona Island in Fortune Bay. They and others were encouraged to move from isolated settlements during the Depression years. It was an early resettlement program that seems to have worked, at least for some people. Mr. Power, you're, you're really a South Coast man, I believe. That's right, sir. From Great Paradise, Placentia Bay. We left back there, 1940. And we came up to find them all. And uh, we were supposed to be fishing and farming, but uh, it didn't prove so successful, not the farming part of it. And uh, I stayed there for about 19 years. And due to uh, the lack of schooling, I had to leave Moved to Kippens, and from thence we went to uh, Stephenville. That's where I am right now. I mean, that's where the house is. And you're fishing here in Fox Island River? We fish here in Fox Island River. Yeah, you've, got a, you've got a place here just to stay in the summer, is it? Got a little shack there, staying yeah. in there. Now, there's a lot of people from the south coast on this shore, I believe. Well, there were 40 families of us all from Presentia Bay came here at one time. But the majority of those are dead now, of course, but their families are all, you know, scattered around. Was it a good move now, looking, looking back on it, to, to come from, from the south well, coast here? Sir, I'm not sorry for moving, that's for sure. Although, apparently, I mean, according to what I've been told, they're, they're making a pretty good living in the, where we left now. But uh, it's the facilities. There was nothing there where we came from, see? You know, there was no lights or nothing. But now, in the southeast bites, for instance, which was, in fact, that's where I was born, where my mother was in Antio. Well, they have... Uh, the generator there or some darn thing or other, they got the phones and, you know, we had nothing like that, say. I don't know. But up here, where you can grow a cow, if you have one, I mean, she'll, she'll live. Down home, she couldn't live, they got nothing for to eat on your rocks. 
So the idea was to, for, for you all to come here and be farmers and fishermen? Farmers and fishermen, that was the idea when I came here. Did people do, do a bit better as soon as they came here, would you say? Yeah. Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. Of course, when we came, it was before the fall of France, and there was a, uh, well, I mean, uh, each person was allotted so much money, eh? which to us, at that time, you know, at that time of the year, was a lot of money. I mean, a couple of hundred dollars, two or three hundred dollars. A dollar was a dollar then. But as time went on, farming faded, and jobs became scarce. More and more people were forced to turn to the sea for a livelihood. Daddy. Ten bucks in full. Are we getting a pound now? Uh, uh, now? 321 right now, but uh, some of that I think is uh, paid for transportation because we bring them right, to the, right into the buyer, you know? Okay. Is that the sure. highest price you've ever got for lobsters? Uh, I think we we got the same price for a week or two last year, I think, and then they, they dropped drastically overnight. Went down to 265, I think. Yeah. So you don't, you don't expect that to keep up in all year? No, we don't. But uh, it, uh, we're keeping a close eye on the Boston market. We're supposed to get 70% of the Boston market, what the lobsters, Newfoundland lobsters are selling on the Boston market. And uh, there's no indication of the price falling yet, so. They may hold for a while. We, uh, we understand that the, uh, the pounds over in uh, Nova Scotia are pretty empty right at the moment, so it's possible they may hold for another couple of weeks. You hope so, anyway? Oh, certainly. That last one, now, that's a big lobster. What, what would you get for that? Oh, that one is worth $10, easy. $10? Oh, yes, for sure. He's three pounds, probably a little more. $10 to you, one in a restaurant, more than that. I wouldn't like to buy him in a restaurant. At high tide, Alan left Fox Island River to haul a few more pots. And we tagged along for a day's fishing on port -a port Bay. Alan Alexander told us about the life of a fisherman in Port-a-Port -Port Bay, but he also talked about the Port-a-Port -Port Development Association, of which he's president. It was great to find a fisherman spearheading such an organization. Who better to plan and negotiate development of Port-a-Port -Port Bay than someone who makes his living directly from it? So how many traps now do you fish out this way? I believe you've had some changes in this lobster regulations. Well, the, yes, uh, as a result of uh, d meetings with uh, DFO and uh, in consultation with fishermen all along the coast, actually, the, uh, there was a, a lobster trap limit reached of uh, 300 traps, I think, per fisherman in Port of Port Bay, and uh, it would vary in different bays throughout the province, but uh, this bay here, we're permitted to fish 300 traps. Does that mean now everybody is fishing 300 traps, or is that just the limit you can have? No, 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 that's just the limit. Uh, what we're finding right at the moment is that there's really no more pressure being put on the fishery as a result of this 300 quota than there was in the past. Uh, what we had was fishermen that were licensed for only 100 traps fishing 250 anyway, because there was no way to enforce the regulation. So now the lobster fishery is a pretty frenzied time. I mean, it seems like everybody is anxious to get out. Now, this must be the main income for a lot of people, isn't it? Well, this is the start of the season, and it's, uh, it's great if you have a good lobster season because then you're not so dependent on the cod fishery. If the cod fishery fail, well, at least you've, you've got part of your season over with the lobster, and uh, then there's after the cod fishery is over, if there is any, there's always a scallop. So it's, uh, we don't have all our eggs in one basket. And then, of course, I suppose uh, the, the bay is, it seems to be a pretty windy place with the wind coming down off the mountains and small boats, so you've got to fish when you can, I guess. Oh, yes, right. And uh, the, uh, oh, if you get out four or five days a week, you're lucky. Yeah, yeah. Most of the time, you're looking at three week, three days a week, probably. 
And how, how much uh, lobster now would uh, a small boat take in on the average in a day? Oh, it's pretty hard to say in a day. I don't know, for a season, I suppose, you would probably be talking around 3,000 pounds, maybe. We came across this crew trying to get some huge square pots around a rock where they figured some extra large lobsters were lurking. Yeah, this is something new, something, I guess, uh, where they got the idea from was this uh, small cod trap that the DFO was uh, showing around in the area some years back. And uh, I think a few of the boys down here got a few of those traps and set them for cod fish and caught lobsters. So uh, consequently, you see these large traps are fishing right now. And, uh, they have been for the last several years. They uh, get uh, more lobsters, probably, and certainly larger lobsters. There are some big lobsters out there in the bay? There was. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know how many we have left, but yes, there are big lobsters out there. Uh, some, uh, I guess, they have been caught up to 18 pounds. And uh, quite a few over last year were taken. In those big the, traps? In those big traps, yeah. They seem to be a bit hard to sink sometimes. Oh, yes, yes. It, uh, oh, it depends. You know, it can be a small or big. It doesn't matter. If you don't have enough weight in it, it, it doesn't sink. Further out in the bay, we steamed till we came to a lone lobster fisherman in his dory. This man is from Blue Beach on the other side of the bay, the long point of land we'd seen earlier from the air. But Port of Port is not really a big bay. I figured Alan would know every fisherman on it, and I was right. Lucien Lacour, he fishes out of Blue Beach. He's from Black Duck Brook, I understand. And uh, he's one of the old salts, I guess, that's been around for years. And uh, he is uh, pretty, one of the, the Lacour family in Black Duck Brook, I think, were one of the bigger family of fishermen out there. Lucien Lacour, that certainly sounds like a French Newfoundland name. I guess a lot of people, yourself probably included, are French descent out yeah, this there's way. There's a lot of French descent around, yes, for sure. It's, uh, I guess, unfortunately, in some cases, we, we've we dropped the language, but uh, we still part French anyway, and, and, and proud of it in a lot of cases. I usually get up around 4.30 in the morning, and, and uh, you go out at daylight. And you'd either haul all your traps if the weather is good, you know, and uh, if not, well, you'd come in, certainly when you get finished, you know. Or if there's any bad weather, we we'll, we have to quit and come in. Oh, there's too many traps out there. Too many for what laughter is there is, see? There's a, well, I suppose most everybody is at it, but uh, nobody gets anything out of it, you know? Well, well you know, if you go at it, uh, you're trying to make a go of it, well, you want to make a few dollars, and, and uh, but the way it is there now, it is, Almost impossible, you know. We would have liked to spend more time with Lucien, but Alan said no, we had to go. In fact, we'd have to beat it if we didn't want to spend the night on the bay. The tide was starting to fall. Alan, it's pretty shoal coming through here, is it? Yeah, it's pretty shoal. We got five feet of water under the keel right now. Five feet? Yeah, three feet. Yeah, that's about it now. On the shoulder. The tide's about half down. We got two feet now. Yeah. There's not much clearance if it's uh, rough. When the, we'd never get in here if it was rough right now. We're down to one and a half feet now. And, uh, so you've got to watch the tides pretty closely. Fish with the tides is what we do here pretty well. Yeah. There's no, uh, there's no, uh, the, once the breakwater is completed, I think it will, uh, or the, uh, that breakwater on that side you see coming out there. I think once that's completed out this far, it'll automatically, the river will automatically flush it out, I think. That's what they're hoping anyway. It seemed to work before. So we're deepening again now. It's only on the outside. Right here itself, the channel is 
lots of water. And there aren't many places on this whole shore where you can where you can uh, take a boat in or out. Of. Well, there's only two in this bay and one in Bay St. George, actually. There's this here and uh, Blue Beach, which you're probably looking at later on this week, and uh, Port Harmon. That's about it, and all the, all the west coast. We, we're not blessed like harbors that they have down east. History hasn't been kind to the Port of Port Peninsula. There are fish around its shores, but it's hard to get a boat in or out. There was some farming here, but it's hard to compete with the huge mainland producers just across the Gulf. And subsistence farming seems to have died everywhere. What forest there is is pretty well tied up, and jobs disappeared when the Americans pulled out of Harmon. So how does a regional development association made up of local citizens hope to turn the economy around? It's, uh, it's a trying, trying at times to say the least. The uh, unemployment rate is very high, as it is in other parts of the province, but sometimes we think it's even higher than, than what the figures they give us. We did a survey some years ago uh, concerning the youth, and we found that there were approximately 90% of them unemployed. So it's, a, it's really a disaster as no, far as employment goes, or unemployment, whatever you wish. Well, what's the Development Association trying to do about it? Well, we're, we're, we're using the tools that the government uh, make available to us, such as your short-term make-work projects. We're trying to uh, put as many of those in place as we can to help the immediate needs of the, the people that are unemployed, obviously. But we're trying also to gear some of that short-term money into long-term development or long-term jobs, if you would. And, um, in the fishery? It, well, we, we're working with the, the uh, tools, I guess, the resources that we have at hand, and the main one would be the fishery. We're also uh, working with uh, in agriculture and tourism and crafts. Someday, tourists will discover what a beautiful place this is. The scenery, the blend of cultures, the crafts and traditions of a people are all of interest to the visitor and can perhaps help the economy. But Alan Alexander and the other members of the Development Association know that the fishery must take priority. The group fought hard for the fish plant at Piccadilly, and now they're facing eyes into aquaculture. We're looking at it more right at the moment as a supplement to the income of the fishermen that are on the water right now. I see. So and it's not uh, a way of creating new jobs. Is not, not in a sense, no. Uh, however, there will be a certain percentage of those type positions left open for aquaculturists as such, where they would be operating under an aquaculture license instead of a fisherman's license. Alan and some other fishermen are learning to dive. Hopefully, there will be money to be made from cultivated scallops when these babies grow up. By the time we got to Blue Beach, it was blowing a gale. We changed our mind about going out in boat. Poking around from one cabin to another, we found our friend, Lucien Lacour, the lobster fisherman. Lucien, I believe you've been fishing pretty well all your life out this way, have you? Pretty well, yeah. When did you start? Well, I started as a, as a boy, I suppose, you know, with the road oil, and, and, and after that, we went in with the motorboat, you know, and, and had the lobsters in the early 50s, I would say, you know. Always here at Blue Beach? Oh, you know, yeah, right, yeah. Days like this, you wouldn't. You wouldn't stay around. You'd be working home, you know. You would walk home and do a day's work home. See? It's pretty uh, a pretty rough place today. Uh, I suppose so, you, you do miss some days at lobster fishery. Yeah. You got to expect some of those days, I suppose. You know, the rough days. Blue Beach is a station for fishermen from all over the peninsula. They've built cabins and shacks, and some live here for pretty well half the year. This is Steve Moraze from Mainland, or La Grande Terre. He's been coming here all his life. Like Lucian and many others on this shore, he's a French Newfoundlander. 
Some of the old people were Acadians from the Maritimes, but not Steve's father. He came from St. Peter. He ran away. He was on a fishing ship? Yeah, on a fishing boat, on a, on a, on a, on a schooner. No, no motor in, just the sailing boat. He was only 14 years old when he, he left St. Peter. And he was in, uh, he hid himself aboard the boat, eh? In a uh, molasses tier, 90 gallon tiers with the uh, fishing gear into it. He was there for three days in sea before he, he found him, you know. He had to come out, he was hungry. Eh? And then he, he married a, a girl And then there. he made, he made land to a red island, out mainland. That's where he land. And he stayed there for six or seven years. And he, he lived there, you know, he would get there, survive from mainland and go across, you know, like boat and ships to come around one time. Schooners. And... So he married a local girl eventually. And he married a girl from mainland. And there's uh, a lot, lot of Morazes there now? And there's a lot of Morazes in mainland. <laughs> and I'm one of them. <laughs> yeah. you, you can still speak French, can you? Yes, a little. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's my glory talking French. Yeah. Je parle français, puis c'est ma langue français. Puis je me parle français. Toute ma famille parle français. J'ai 11 enfants, cinq, six filles, puis cinq garçons. Ils sont tous smart. Puis euh, j'ai trois qui pas mariés. Ils sont tous mariés. J'ai 20, 24. Et euh, des grandchildren. <laughs> Very good. Impressive to me. Steve Morazé, storyteller, fisherman. Lucien Lacour, fisherman, farmer, linesman, trucker. He's tried it all. Now at 70, he's in the fishing boat and proud of it. Yet there's resentment burning, for he could not get a bigger boat and join the winter fleet off Porta Bass. Now it's too late. The bigger vessels are catching all the fishy fields, and there are too many dories fishing for lobsters. But with his lobster license and hard work, he'll get by. He'll chase the cod when the lobster season is over. But what about all the young people of Porta Port Bay? Young people with no jobs, without hope. What will they do? That's the bigger question. Are there enough natural resources to turn it around? Can prosperous times come to this part of Newfoundland? It's a tough job the Regional Development Association has tackled. Are you optimistic for the future then of the Port of Port Peninsula? Well, you have to be. You know, we, we're a, a grassroots operation, a grassroots uh, development association, and uh, we we have the interest, I guess, of the fishermen and farmers at heart, and we, we, we are fishermen and farmers, obviously, so we have to be optimistic. We, we, we want to live here, we want to improve the uh, area, we want to have a better place for our children to grow up, obviously. And uh, right now, the only thing they have looked to, to look forward to is uh, a plane ticket probably up to Toronto somewhere to find a job, so uh, we hope that that can be turned around somewhat. However small contribution we make, it'll Hopefully it will, it will change the uh, situation in the long run, you know. Well, uh, some people say, well, you're, you're spending too much time at the fishery, but what else do we have? We, we have 700 fishermen depending on that fishery. So if we can do some little part to enhance the livelihood of some of those fishermen, well, so be it. That, that's the way we should lean. port -a port Bay. On one side, towering cliffs. On the other, the windswept beaches. And in between, a bay that must somehow be made to provide for the people who choose to live on its shores.